My name is Dr. Courtney Pokshava. I'm a rising chief resident at Columbia University and a former research fellow at the Medical College of Wisconsin. On behalf of Dr. Patrick Murphy, myself and our co-authors, I'd like to thank Jax for the opportunity to provide a brief overview of our work. Surgical patients are well known to have a several fold increased risk of BTE, 50 to 70% of which though has been mitigated by the implementation of pharmacologic prophylaxis. Despite this, 5 to 13% of patients undergoing abdominal or pelvic operations will go on to have a breakthrough event. Anoxaparin is the preferred choice for BTE prophylaxis in surgical patients due to its favorable pharmacokinetics. Traditionally, this is administered in a one-size-fits-all manner that is only adjusted for the severely obese or renally insufficient. Recent data has supported the use of anti-factor 10A monitoring for patients on anoxaparin, well, there is a lack of consensus on the optimal dosing and monitoring. Additionally, there are many patient-level factors that impact the metabolism of anoxaparin, which may differ significantly across subsets of surgical patients. While some data exists in various subsets of these patients, there is a lack of data in the acute care surgery population. As such, we conducted a prospective cohort study of all adult acute care surgery patients on standard dose Lovenox for VTE prophylaxis over a six month period at our institution. All included patients were initiated on standard dose anoxaparin, according to BMI as shown here. Anti-factor 10A levels were obtained four hours following the third dose of anoxaparin with a target range of 0.3 to 0.5. Dosing adjustments and repeat measurements were obtained as permitted by patient length of stay. 81 patients in our study underwent successful anti-factor 10A monitoring of whom 75% were started on a regimen of 40 milligrams of anoxaparin daily. We found that 88% of patients in our study achieved inadequate anti-factor 10A inhibition. Notably, there was no difference in patient demographics, BMI, comorbidity, or operative characteristics between those with in-range anti-factor 10A levels and those without. In conclusion, our study has shown that standard anoxaparin dosing provides inadequate anti-factor 10A inhibition for VTE prophylaxis in acute care surgery patients. Anti-factor 10A monitoring is available and can help guide adequate dosing. Additionally, our data suggests that BID dosing regimen should be considered and may provide better VTE prophylaxis, though further study is needed to evaluate this along with alternate dosing strategies. We are currently studying a more personalized approach to VTE prophylaxis using estimated blood volume dosing. Ultimately, it is our hope that our work will help improve the outcomes for our acute care surgery population. Thank you.